Hey everyone, come on in, come on in, come on in. This is your girl Carolise, and today we're going to talk about another exciting topic in business analysis. You know, I am your business analyst coach, Carolise, and so everything with me is super, super exciting, super, super awesome. I'm going to give you some great tips and great information about to advance in your business analyst career. So today we're talking about agile again. So we're talking specifically about user story writing and how and when to split your user story. So the topic of today is when to split your user stories. Yes, that's what we're talking about. So I've had some, some technical issues for this video, guys. I've been trying to do this video for maybe an hour now and my laptop, which is I plugged in right there. <laughs> My laptop wouldn't come on and now I have another laptop and it's just it's just a mess. I'm going to try my best with what I have going on here and see how it works. I hope the sound is good on this other laptop and we'll just work with what we got, okay? So yes, yeah, so how to split and when to split your user stories. So um, one of the first things I would say is that remember that your user story is from the perspective of your user, right? You're talking, you're thinking about your user, you're not thinking about your developer or the people internally to your company, like your managers and so on. None of that. You're thinking about the user. And so you're trying to write your user stories always to have value to the end user. So when you're thinking of splitting your stories, it must be that each story provides value to the user and that's the main thing you're going to be thinking about as you're thinking of splitting your stories and even just writing your user stories so one of the things i would say for splitting or knowing when to split your user stories i tend to write user stories and number the acceptance criteria so if you've written a user story and you put the acceptance criteria in there and you've gone over maybe 10 acceptance criteria i would say that would be the maximum you should try to aim for. You could probably squeeze in two more, make it 12 if you really have to. But going into the teens, no, way too big. Way too big, way too much complexity, gonna be too hard to estimate and yeah. So obviously it depends on what you've written in each of those individual numbered acceptance criteria. And I probably would do another video on each of those being atomic. They, they deal with one thing and one thing only, um, but Generally speaking, when you have a user story with a lot, a lot of acceptance criteria, it is too big. It's too much. They're not breaking it into bite-sized chunks that the developers can estimate easily. And nobody's gonna really know the, the full complexity of the stories until they get into it, right? So you don't wanna make it so big that when they get in there, they thought they could take how many story points and now it's taking much more and it throws everything off. You don't wanna do that. So I would say when you're numbering your acceptance criteria, 10 is about the amount that you don't want to pass. You could squeeze it to 12. Don't make that a habit. And uh, definitely don't get into the teens. Just don't get into the teens. When you start getting to the teens, it means the story is too complex. You need to cut that sucker in half and make another story. Okay, that's how you do it. So we have other ways to split your story, and I'm going to get into that shortly. But before I do, check out a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Guys, I wanna introduce you to this pillow that I have been using for almost a month now. This pillow actually has water in it. <laughs> so it has this wonderful little nozzle here. You open it up, it comes with this funnel, you pour the water in to the level that you're comfortable with and the pillow does not leak. So you're not worried that the water is gonna drain out. It's not gonna drain out, you can see. And um, it's actually very, very comfortable. It's very soft. The water's on this side and the rest of it is just like regular pillow, but it's very soft and very cozy and very uh, comforting. And I've been searching for pillows for a while because I have neck and upper back issues. And until I found this pillow, I have not gotten a good night's rest. So I've tried every type of pillow. I bought memory foam pillow, I bought hotel style pillow, everything. But until I got this pillow, because what the water does, it keeps it cool during the night. And it also supports your body in a very flexible way that really helps you to not wake up with like weird muscle pains in your neck and stuff. So I would encourage you to go get this pillow. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. And when you buy it from that link, you'll be supporting me and what I'm doing here on YouTube. So go get this pillow, get a good night's rest because you deserve it. The other thing 
I would say for splitting your user story would be you could split it by the technology that the stories are going to be touching, right? So if let's say you work on a project that spans different platforms, like you have APIs going out to different platforms. So let's say, I don't know, you integrate with, with Slack, you integrate with Teams, you integrate with, I don't know, go to meeting or something, you integrate with Salesforce, you integrate with C, you know, SAP C for C or Dynamics, any of these big software tools, Tableau, whatever. And for some reason your story needs to span across these different things. Maybe you write a story for the for the integration itself, right? So you need to write a story for each of the technologies that you'll be touching. So instead of writing one story that has all the technologies in it, you write a separate story for each of the technologies, even though the acceptance criteria might be the very same thing. Connect, right? Connect in this way. Here, use the password, use a secret to connect. And so it might seem not logical to just say, okay, this is the one action, but do this action on these different platforms. But no, it makes much more sense if you create a story for each of the platform and then the same action in each of them, if that makes sense, right? So you want to split your stories as well based on the technology and the platforms, the different types of uh, tools that you're integrating to or different um, technology that you're using for that story. The other way to split your user stories could be by the roles. So if you're doing a banking application and you have a processor, you have the applicant, you have the approver, you have, I don't know, the manager or whatever. So you have all of these different roles that need to touch an application. You might split your story based on uh, just the roles, right? So the roles are what they see. For example, if you log in as a manager, you might see a different screen and you have different workflow. So you, you can split the stories just based on the, the user's role. That's another way to split it. The other way also to split your user stories is if, it's, if the story is affected by multiple business rules. So if there's different business rules that come into play, sometimes you can split the story by each of those business rules. So let's say, for example, you apply for um, for a loan on, on a banking application. So you're processing the loan application, right? But if your score is, I don't know, 770, then they push you into automatic approval and, you know, you get a response right away and you see that you've gotten, you've gotten the loan, right? And that's one flow. And then the other business rule says, well, if you're between... Um, 680 and 770 then you're going to be kicked to you know temporary approval and you're going to have a manual review of your application by some some approver or whatever right so that's another business rule that goes into effect so you write a, a different story for when your credit score is between this range and then maybe if you're below 680 they say well you know you <laughs> tough luck <laughs> you can't get this loan and so you have another uh, workflow that says, hey, you know, when the credit score is below 680, then you show this screen that says, you know, we're unfortunate we have not been able to approve your loan. And we automatically generate a letter that gets mailed out to you and blah, 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 whatever the business rule is. So each of those types of scenarios, um, it's, ha it's both looking at the application, but it handles it differently based on one maybe one field, the results in one field. So you'd write your, your, your user story with the acceptance criteria of each of those business rules. So business rules will definitely drive how you split your user stories. The other way to split your user stories is based on the design. So the design has multiple screens and different elements on the screen and each of those elements handles something different. You could be looking at the same uh, it's a combination of the business rules and the screen because you don't want the screen to be doing something different from your business rules. But sometimes the way how it's presented to the user, even though it's the same rule, is different. Maybe there's multiple screens that you show and maybe there are buttons that do different things and so on and so forth. So one other way to split your user stories is to look at the design and each of the screens could have their own user stories or each of the elements on each screen could have their own user stories or a combination of that. So the design can drive how you split your user stories. Another thing when you're, when you're thinking about splitting your user stories, and this is going to be very obvious, but I'll say it anyway, is the complexity, right? How complex is this functionality? So even though it might be simple to write it in one word, like, okay, now I need to, um, I need to pull accounts from Salesforce and 
uh, show the hierarchy of these accounts, for example, right? So it's a simple line. You could just say pull all of the active accounts from Salesforce, and that could be just a one-line acceptance criteria in your user story. But the complexity of that is that there could be several hierarchies. You could go into you know level one accounts, and these accounts have children accounts, and those have grandchildren, and it can get like seven or eight or whatever level deep. And then some of those accounts, um, you know, maybe empty. I don't know. There could be a lot of different things that could make it complex. So you want to look at the complexity of this. So even though it sounds simple, okay, just pulling the hierarchies of accounts into this into into our system, you need to take into account the fact that there are different hierarchy levels and if that impacts anything you don't know so just looking at the complexity of this task could say okay maybe i need a story for pulling them in and maybe i need another story for displaying them for example or maybe i need another story for handling if you know it's over n levels deep if you assume that you have unlimited depth of levels of hierarchies in Salesforce. I don't know if that's true. But let's say that if it's over seven levels deep, then it can't be displayed on your screen because you don't have so much space for indentation, blah, blah, blah. So it could be that it's a simple ask, just import all of these uh, accounts hierarchies. It seems like just a one-liner, but it's more complicated because of how systems are developed or how they work. So you might say, okay, well, let's split this story. One is to pull in everything, and then let's create another story for how we display it, how we handle it. If it goes over seven levels deep, or how many ever, how many, how many levels you want to go, and uh, if the accounts are all empty, how we handle that, things like that. So when I say complexity, I'm not trying to muddy that up with business rules. I'm trying to just say that even one thing can be very complex if you look at it technically. And so you might just split it up to make it easier for the developer to know what to do. And you write that into your acceptance criteria in your user story. And that's how you split your user story. Hope that was clear. Really do. I really hope it was clear. The other thing to think about when you are um, splitting your stories is just the jobs to be done. And this goes back a lot to uh, a little bit to do with your business rules. So when you talk about jobs to be done, it's more from the perspective of what are you trying to accomplish? What's the user trying to do with the with the value you're trying to give them uh, from your system, right? So if there are multiple jobs to be done, um, you want to split the stories for each of those jobs, right? So we have a business rules which says, hey, if you're applying for a loan, then you need to go through this process. You need to give us your social security number. You need to be able to uh, vet you, and then we can tell you if we approve. That's great, but that's a part of the business, what the prison is trying to do. What the user is trying to do is get the loan <laughs> because they need the money. So the, the job, the user's job to be done, or the applicant's job to be done, is to um successfully apply for the loan and get some information back as to whether or not they were approved or not right so if that's the user's perspective don't get so lost into what the business needs to do or you write the stories for the business but you need to have a story that is going to cover everything the user is trying to do if you gave the user the response to say hey you know you did not get approved then what's the next thing that the user needs to do what's the next recourse you need to handle how do they they, what 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 would we recommend for them? Maybe we could say, oh, you can get the loan for this amount, but the loan can be for this smaller amount. And if you want to take that advantage, you want to take advantage of that lower level offer, then this is another flow that you can follow, right? So what's it? What are they trying to do? They're trying to get a loan, and so if you deny them for one thing, maybe you could offer them something else that could pacify them. That's a job. That's a job to be done. And so you split the story based on what the user is trying to accomplish. I hope that was clear. You know, I hope so. So those are the kind of the external influences that help you to determine when to split a story. But there's some other things that can help you determine when to split a story. And that could be just on the suggestion of the development team. So sometimes I write a story and I am, you know, I'm within my 10 acceptance criteria. It's based on the business rules and all the complexity, the jobs to be done, the technology, all the different stuff. And the developers still come back and say, Carolise, can you just split the story? 
because they have something else they're working on that might just align better with a piece of the story and they just want to complete that piece since they're already in that mindset. And so the other piece can stay for the next sprint or whatever. So it could be a whole different thing. Who knows what these developers are thinking, but they know more in terms of how the technology is built and they might just come back to you and just suggest that you split the story. And if they do, then fine, you split it. That's it, great. <laughs> the other reason to split the story, and this is a more you know internal reason, is that maybe based on where they are with the development, part of the story can be done in the current sprint and the other part can be done in another sprint for some other reason, right? So it could just be in terms of deadline, it could be, you know, they, they might need to meet a certain cutoff point, somebody could be going off on vacation, who knows? But these are just internal reasons to split the story. So they may just come back and say, hey, we can finish this piece today, but we, you know, we're at the end of the sprint, we didn't get to complete all of it, you know, so we need to split the story and do the rest the next sprint. Fine. And so you'll split the story at, in, in those cases as well. So the other reason to split the story could be because of, you know, another internal reason could be that the priority has changed, right? So the product owner or the product manager or project manager might come back to you and say, you know, this feature was, you know, well requested by the client but now something has changed and they don't really see it as urgent or critical anymore. And so you could just do this piece instead of doing the whole thing and now there's a change and blah, blah, blah. So now you might need to reevaluate the entire story and there might be pieces of it that you keep and pieces of it that you split. You don't wanna lose it, you don't wanna delete it because it might come back again. So you split the story and you leave the piece that's not urgent anymore until you know, further notice, right? Maybe it comes back around and you have the story ready or it just sinks lower and lower in the list of prioritization, right? <laughs> so that's the way that you sometimes have to split stories to kind of adapt to changes. All right, gang, so that's it. That's what we've got for you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, click the link below, right? Watch the next video over here. <laughs> Watch the video, keep supporting me. Go check out the sponsors of this video in, in the link in the description below. And I will see you guys next time. Take care. This is Carolise.